just when you think 2020 can't possibly shock us anymore, this happens. Yesterday, 13 extremists were arrested for, for allegedly plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and she claims that one man gave them their marching orders. Watch. Last week, the President of the United States stood before the American people and refused to condemn white supremacists and hate groups like these two Michigan militia groups. Stand back and stand by, he told them. Stand back and stand by. Hate groups heard the president's words not as a rebuke, but as a rallying cry, as a call to action. When our leaders speak, their words matter. They carry weight. When our leaders meet with, encourage, or fraternize with domestic terrorists, they legitimize their actions, and they are complicit. So is she right to say he's blowing a dog whistle to these extremist groups? Sonny, what do you think? Listen, I, I you know, I, I think it's a valid point, Joy. I think it's a valid question, uh, whether or not the president's rhetoric um, has emboldened, uh, at the very least, these groups, you know, by not only refusing to denounce them at every turn, but by saying things like, stand back, um, stand by, but um, by also tweeting things like, liberate Michigan in response to this governor merely putting in precautions to try to protect American citizens from a deadly virus when this president said it was up to the governors of states to protect the citizens, that he wasn't going to put in any federal mandates. Uh, you know, and, and the other thing is he feigns ignorance of these extremist groups when his own right. FBI head, Christopher Wray, basically testifies that um, the... Uh, uh, domestic violence extremists remain the most persistent and lethal threat in the United States. And I, I, I really ask everybody to read the FBI F affidavit because it is chilling. We're talking about people saying that they were going to take her hostage before the election, take her to a secure location in Wisconsin for a trial, a treason trial, and they had surveilled her home. I mean, this was serious, and they had taken actions in furtherance of a conspiracy. Her life was in danger. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Sarah, do you think he's guilty? Um, I think these groups have definitely been emboldened, as Sonny said, but I want to first commend the FBI and the local law enforcement because it takes them infiltrating these groups in person, on social media, and they're the reason this was stopped. I think it's a perfect storm right now. These, I, I, in reading this, Michigan has had a, a history of these militia groups. They have maybe the highest number, and they're kind of seen as the, the desired you know, pinnacle of, of militia groups, and then combined with a governor who, like Sonny said, uh, was had some of the most, uh, the strictest guidelines during this pandemic. She had like almost 200 executive orders. It was like a perfect storm for them to rise up in a sense. And I think the scary thing about all of this is that the one common thread in all these groups that are scattered all the way across the country in all 50 states is they seize on civil unrest. And if there's something we can say about the times we live in, they're div divided and polarized. And it's the biggest reason we need leadership right now who bring the temperature down. And that is not what we're getting. Not only are we not getting leadership, we're not getting any help from any of the Republican leadership either because they coddle mm -hmm. and allow this type of thing. They have been coddling him since the giddy app. So I think they're just as guilty. What do you think, Anna? I think this should not be partisan. I think this is about being American. I think this is about being human. Uh, and condemning political violence should not be a hard thing to do. Whether it's Steve Calise, uh, Scalise getting shot in a baseball field, in a congressional baseball field, or whether it's Governor Whitmer's um, threat and the danger she was under. I watched this last night, as, uh, yesterday, as it was unfolding, and I didn't, you know, I, I, you know what shocked me? It shocked me that it's shocking, but it no longer shocks me. 
In 2020, yeah. the idea that there is this conspiracy to go kidnap, assassinate, try a governor of Michigan is something that, you know, I felt like I was watching an episode of the Ozarks or an episode of Scandal. But somehow, reality is even crazier than fiction. And look, words matter. Donald Trump tweeting out, liberate Michigan. For most people, that's just one more Donald Trump tweet. But for if you are a whack job, if you are unstable, those things trigger you, and those things lead to action. He has got the biggest bully pulpit of anyone in the world, the American presidency, and he should use it to condemn white supremacy, to condemn yeah. political violence, and to, frankly, call for unity. Because words matter when they are the president's words. They matter even more. Right. They're not just unstable. They're organized. That's what's scary. Mm -hmm. uh,